everybody, it's Valerie Holdren with Soap Underground. It's Sunday afternoon and just on a whim I decided to come and um, make a video. Um, I'm going to be trying what has been the elusive feather swirl for me. I did it once probably a couple of years ago and I have no proof because I did all natural colorants and they faded. <laughs> so I'm going to be using natural colorants again today. But um, anyway, I just want to try it and I thought I'd bring you along. And um, I'm in the mood for spring fragrances. So um, I'm doing one today called Key Lime and it's made with orange, lime, and lemon and the majority is lime but it smells so good um, so I will bring you back when my oils and lye are ready okay uh, I am ready to um, mix my lye solution with my oils uh, my lye solution is down to about 176 and my oils are on low and they are at right around 158, 160. So I'm going to go ahead and get this started. And as usual, I pour down the uh, shaft of the stick blender to keep it from splashing so much. Um, in my lye solution, I have my Tussa Silk aloe vera juice and water and I discounted I saved out or held back rather I mean people refer to it in different ways but I didn't add four ounces of what the recipe calls for of my liquid because I want to add some afterwards I have in here four ounces of hot coconut milk and I'm going to add two ounces of it now. I'm just going to eyeball it and then I'm going to save the other two ounces, put them back on the stove and keep them warm to add after the cook to help with fluidity. <laughs> And I start out just with short bursts um, because sometimes it splatters out until it starts to get a little thicker. And then I just stir in between. And I'm going to bring this to about a medium trace. Just fast forward through this part if you don't want to watch it. For the new soap makers, if you were new to soap making, this would be considered a thin trace. It's adhering to the top of the stick blender. And you can see a little trace over your batter. But I like to go...
come down to my last um, shaft for my this stick blender. So I'm gonna have to order a couple more from Rambleberry. This one's doing the same thing the other one did that I had to throw away a couple of weeks ago. but I'm going to go just a little bit more. Um, my oils today are canola, castor, coconut, lard, shea butter, and olive oil. And I'm super fatting this recipe up front in the formula at 5%. And then I'm going to add 1% after the cook to the entire formula, to the entire batch. And then the colors that I'm using have been infused with oils. Um, one of them is apricot kernel and the other two are almond oil. So it's that's, that's the way I'm going to super fat in other ways. Um, I'm trying to think of how I could explain it that it won't confuse you. The total recipe is going to be 5% right here. Then after the cook I'm going to add another 1% to the entire batch. Then I'm going to separate off into three separate containers and add my colors that have been infused with a super fatting oil like almond oil and apricot kernel. So total recipe will probably be super fatted at about 7%. I hope that makes sense. Um, so I'm just going to put the lid back on this and um, come back when it is starting to cook. Well, it's starting to do a little um, cooking on the sides, folding over. My crock pot is still on low. Um, I moved my light over, hoping you could see. Um, I don't think it's quite ready to bump up or jump up at me. Um, I hope it's not going to do much of a volcano. I, I started, purposely started at lower temperatures. Um, um, I'm probably going to wish I'd have gone ahead and done it at a higher temperature because I need to go make dinner. But this took priority. Have you ever been in that position? Um, I do love this recipe. Um, I've used it before. It's been a while. The only thing that I changed was um, before I used Crisco and today I used canola instead. Um, I like using canola in in a smaller percentage. I think this one was at um, 7% and my caster was at 8%. Um, I can't get to my recipe because I did it on my phone and I'm filming with my phone. I think my coconut was at 16%. I know my lard was at 30. Uh, shea butter was 
probably I, I just don't remember exactly but when I post the video I'll post the formula I know the numbers were really good um, I think the cleansing was an 11 and the hardness was around a 37 but I'll post that when um, when I post the video so I don't know if I'm going to actually film the whole cook this time rather than maybe once it gets to Vaseline I'll bring you back when I add the additives and um, and the design so I'll see you then okay well within about eight minutes of cutting the camera off my soap um, it is at Vaseline I am completely neutral I've done my zap test so I'm going to add my extra 1% of super fat, which is apricot kernel. And I brought my additives that have been keeping warm on the stove over so that I don't have to go back and forth and it just helps, you know, keep the batter more fluid the warmer you keep anything you add to your soap. So if you remember, I did 5% super fat in the formula and an extra 1% throughout the entire batter. And the next thing I'm going to add is my yogurt. That is um, one tablespoon per pound. And this is a two pound batch, so I have two uh, room temperature tablespoons, still a little cool. And that not only helps to thin things down, but to cool things down so that I can move on to the next process. You can probably see the steam coming off of that. I notice it when I play my videos back. You can really notice it now that I have this light overhead. So it's very important to stir that yogurt in exceptionally well to keep it from cooking your soap because this crop is still very hot. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to add is the rest of my hot coconut milk that I held back from the beginning. I added two ounces while I was bringing it to Trace and held back the two ounces to add now. Hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> it's going to help make it more pourable, manageable, workable, whatever you want to call it. Um, sometimes I get things that I consider pourable, but most of the time it's just really manageable and workable but because I want to do a design I really hope that this formula is going to stay fluid enough to do that I am using 38% lilac wood and I'm stirring in my milk really well too I love the, the whiteness that lard adds to this soap helps it to stay so much whiter. Your oils of choice really do play a factor in that. And I chose all oils and butters today that stay whiter. Because I don't like to add color where I don't need it. And I like the natural whiteness of a soap. Okay, now I'm going to take my temperature, and that's still really thick. It says I'm down to 168, so I'm going to go ahead. And this is my two tablespoons of sugar, which will help with lather with two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, 
and one tablespoon of sodium lactate, all of which are good for the skin and help to offer more lather and a more workable batter. That's the goal anyway. <laughs> I didn't add honey today because I just wanted to do something different, so I opted for sugar. And that helped to smooth things out and thin things down. Isn't it a pretty color? I'm going to let it sit for a couple of minutes while I go over and get my cups that have been heating um, to pour my batter into for the coloring and to get my mold and hopefully it'll you know thin up just a little bit more. So I will See you in a minute. Okay, in here I have my turmeric that was infused in almond oil and I went ahead and added some of my fragrance oil. And here is my infused indigo with almond oil and my nettle leaf powder that's infused with apricot kernel. So, um, and I went ahead and added a little of the uh, essential oil blend to the entire batch. Which will probably thicken things up a little bit. So, I'm going to pour off. Not a whole lot. About three quarters of a cup. Because I need to save a good amount of the white to add between. And I'm going to use less of the blue. Ooh, hot. And I can always add a little bit more of the green, and I think I'm going to need to because that's pretty light. my indigo. And this is about not quite a tablespoon and I have more to add if I need it. And I think I will. I actually might add a little bit of that to the nettle. get maybe a blue green. A little more. Mm, that's kind of a blue green.
the indigo. And then my turmeric. That's pretty. It's a pretty color. All right. No idea what I'm gonna get. I'm gonna start with my natural. Next thing I'm going to add is my darker indigo. I'm just going to try to keep it to one side. green. This is the, a blend of the nettle and the, well, I'm going to top that with some white. Probably doing this all wrong, but I get nervous. Hope you can see. Now I'm going to do some of the indigo and nettle blend. Put some on the other side. is really workable. The colors aren't as fluid as the one that isn't colored, but it's doable. And now this pretty turmeric infused. Put it on this side. Some more white. Hope you can see what I'm doing. It looks like you can. pass with the indigo. Try to use it 
rest of that on top. That's stored back down in here. I just want to lick this spoon. It smells so good. what I think I want more yellow I'm gonna finish what's gonna actually be in the feather design with the yellow just because I want it to be a little cheery Okay, give that a good bang. And hopefully, get a good swirl here. So the video showed going all the way to the, through what I swirled. To the bottom and out and I'm going to try it one more time just because I don't know what I got but we're going to find out so let's see if I can get this just get a little top going here As you know, I'm not very good with tops. Spray it down with my water. Give it a little something on top. I probably should have just let it
clean that up, put it in the freezer, and see you when we cut. See you soon. Hi, it's Valerie. Um, it's about 18 hours longer than I had anticipated cutting this soap. Um, yesterday evening when I finished making the soap, I some of you may already know this, some not. Um, I went upstairs and made dinner and um, as I was coming out of my daughter's bedroom, taking her her dinner, um, my heart started doing racing and doing the things that it was doing back in June. Um, and it went on for about two hours and I finally called 911. To make a long story short, I spent the night in the hospital. They have determined that they need to change my medication, which they have already started. Um, there's a couple of different diagnoses, but they are trying to avoid doing a pacemaker. And um, my doctor who has taken care of me since 2003 said he just wants to use that as a last resort. On the flip side of that, he doesn't want many more episodes like last night, nor do I. That is not a good feeling. Um, but anyway, I'm back to cut what I hope is going to be the feather swirl. I have already cut one end off, and it looks like, at least that part of it, looks like I might have succeeded. But we're going to find out. Um, and then I'm going to go take a bath because I feel terribly grungy after being in the hospital. Um, but first things first, I, I thought about this soap all night long. So here we go. And I have something kind of like a feather or a flower. This is my indigo and um, this is a little bit of indigo and nettle and this is my turmeric um, infusion. All of these are infused. Um, so, so far I'm happy with it. I, I had my daughter take it out of the freezer last night um, so it's it's been sitting all night in the mold. It still feels a little soft. I'm not used to cutting this soft. But it smells wonderful. And that, that is kind of pretty. Very springy, which is what I was hoping for. Especially with this essential oil blend. Um, in the video, I think I referred to it one time as fragrance oil, but I meant, I think I went back and retracted that. Um, they are essential oils. Um, lemon fivefold, and I got this from Voyager out of Canada, and I'm very happy with it. My lime um, distilled, and then my orange. Um, so it is an essential oil blend, and it smells so good. The um, name that they gave for it was Key Lime, but I think it smells better than that. So I have a little bit of a feather, but more flower, I think. So I'll have to practice that again. I did make these chunky bars. Yep, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. I'm just pleased that I didn't have to stay in the hospital for another few days, as I was, at first, they were talking like. Um, but after I did well during the night and didn't have any more episodes of AFib, they were, um, felt comfortable in letting me come home to start the medication because they just did a bunch of tests back in June and he didn't feel the need right now to repeat those tests. Well, I'm quite pleased. 
um, I have a flower. <laughs> so that's my cut. And um, thank you for watching another video. And um, I'm going to take some pictures. And um, go take a bath and get the hospital grime off of me. Have a good day.